research that has the potential to revolutionise the way in which we transport and store vaccines. But before I do that, I want to give you a little bit of background into how vaccination actually works. So when the human immune system encounters something like a bacteria or a virus, a whole array of cells get to work in order to defeat the invader or the pathogen. The cell I'm going to be focusing on today is called a memory B cell. These memory B cells, oh sorry, but these memory B cells essentially remember the invader, and if it's ever encountered again, they elicit a bigger, faster, and stronger response, quickly allowing your immune system to overcome the pathogen. This phenomenon is called immunological memory. Vaccinations work on this premise of immunological memory. Within the injection you might be familiar with, maybe a weakened pathogen. Because this pathogen is weakened, your immune system is quickly able to overcome it. But in this process, memory B cells specific to that pathogen will be created. The downside to using a weakened pathogen within our vaccination is that because it's still alive, it needs to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius in order to be effective. This is called the cold chain. The cold chain provides logistical challenges, particularly in developing countries. Transport, packing, storage all limit the breach of vaccination and any breaches in the cold chain result in wastage. This increases the cost of vaccination in a space where it's crucial to keep costs low. Previous attempts to eliminate the cold chain have required highly specialised equipment or complex procedures that increase the cost, where what we're trying to do is keep costs down. However, in, oh sorry, firstly I just wanted to draw your attention to this graphic which shows that um, incidence of measles, sorry it's cut off a bit at the top, but incidence of measles is clustered largely around developing countries and other preventable diseases share a really similar distribution to this. And one of the fundamental reasons for this under-vaccination is the need for the cold chain. However, in May of this year, a team of Canadian research scientists have published a paper suggesting that they may have found a way to cheaply and effectively remove the need for the cold chain. So one of the, a member of the research team, who was then a graduate student, was in the supermarket and she was looking at some Listerine breath sheets. She knew that these breath sheets were covered in a layer of a carbohydrate called poiolin. And she also knew that fragile biological molecules <coughs> had also been protected from carbohydrates that were similar to poiolin. And she wondered whether this could be used to protect vaccines. A couple of years later, the research team created a sugar film made from poiolin and another carbohydrate called trailers. Together, these two carbohydrates immobilize the virus, regulate against temperature, and prevent from oxidation. And in fact, the team's hypothesis was correct. An inactivated influenza virus, chosen because it was especially fragile, was able to be stored for three months at 40 degrees Celsius <coughs> while still maintaining its efficacy. Even better, the simplicity and ubiquity of trailers and poilin mean that it's relatively inexpensive. So where to from here? Well, currently the study is only in its early findings and it's only been tested on mice. The team are looking for funding to proceed to human trials. However, as trailers and poilin are already used in our food products, they've already been approved by many food and drug regulators. So the process may be expediated. Ultimately, this research may have the potential to revolutionise the way that we store and transport vaccines. Whether it be a safeguard against our cold chain here in Australia, in our metro or rural and remote communities, or a necessary feature for the treatment of vaccines in a developing nation, this may be another small step <coughs> in preventing infectious disease and improving global health. Thank you.